In this session of getting started with Phaser, we're going to be adjusting the physics of our player so that it has a little bit more life to it. So it has a little more slip and slide, so it becomes more interesting to work with in the game. So to do that, we're going to jump down into our game scene and go look at the player here. And what we're changing is instead of just setting the velocity of the player, so we immediately go from 0 to 160 or negative 160, instead what we're going to say is this dot player dot set acceleration on it. And we'll say acceleration x on it and we're going to have to play with the numbers here a little bit to figure out what works but I do know we probably need a little higher value to make it snappy and a little bit more fun to watch so I'll say negative 260 we'll comment out the set velocity do the same thing here and then this dot player well, dot set acceleration x this time it will be a positive 260 and we can um, what I'm going to do is eliminate here where when we let go of the keys it kills the velocity because that's not what we want but what we can do is say it's time to stop accelerating and we will just set our acceleration at x. Now I already have it running inside my browser here with live server so if I click game still looks the same but now you'll notice how the player really is starting to but we don't stop so if I'm running in one direction, I have to start accelerating back in the other direction. We don't have any deceleration going on until we collide with something. In that case, we collided with the boundary of the world. But now you can see how I can just slide around. So that's not working quite right. And what we need to do in addition to changing our acceleration is we need to then adjust the player itself a little bit. So let's see where is player here. So we have bounce, we have collide with the world. Those things are all wonderful and great. But we also want to adjust the player. And what we want to do is introduce some degree of drag into it. So we would say this dot player dot set drag x. So drag is like creating friction so the player will slow down. Now we have different values we can put in. In this case I put um, 0.95 so it doesn't take off a lot per update cycle or you know 60 times a second it's removing effectively 5% of it. Now if we said 2 at that point, yeah, that would take off 80% of our velocity right away. So let's see how that functions. And what we see is no change. And the reason that we don't see a change is we have to set one other property for the player. And that property we have to set is set damping and our options are true and false for that. That says use drag and friction. The other, if damping is not set, it won't do that. So now, so we can see it's that at point two is almost like what we had before when we started today. But if I try again with say 0.95, now I can go and you get a little bit of slide. So we have that slide action going on there. Now what I would like is while the player still has most of their velocity I would like to see that they stay in that 
running sideways so they're looking in the direction that they're sliding though what would be even better is to make additional frames of artwork so then i would have a freeze frame body position where the character has like say one leg out and an arm out for balance and they're showing that they've stopped running now they're in a slide position that would be great and that would be something else that you could include if you added it into your project so to figure out what we are doing with this what we really want or need to do is we need to be able to see what is the velocity of the character so to be able to see the velocity of the character what we have to do is let's just log this out so we can see it I'll say this dot player dot body so the velocity is a property of the body of the sprite in this case the sprite is the player and the one we are looking for is new velocity and we find this particular property by looking through the phaser documentation actually reading through the source code of the phaser game engine and here at line 293 we see the body's change in position due to velocity at the last step in pixels the size of this value depends on the simulation step rate so it's going to give us a value so new velocity will be the value of what is our current speed on that particular frame so that we can see it now when I go over here and go back into my code and save this now I go back into our scene and run it and we'll see um, we see now this velocity is a vector so it has an x and a y component and if we only want to see the x component then we could change it so that in our code we're looking for the x property of it and then going back into the code we'll see now it's giving me values so when I'm running and then we slow down and when we're getting close to slowing down it seems that it's somewhere when we're less than one or less than negative one so the absolute value of our speed when it becomes less than one that's really when we're starting to slide so um, just so that doesn't keep going we'll just do a little quick refresh on the page there go back into the code so we don't need to log that out anymore because that does create a console nightmare it'd probably be better if we really cared as to have some text on screen where we just keep updating that value with our velocity that would be another way that we could accomplish that so what we really want to do is adjust our properties here and you may have noticed when we looked at the source code or if you were reading the screen quickly or stop the video we have both velocity and new velocity so new velocity is the amount of change happening on any given frame so it's what is that step in velocity we're going to move on that cycle which is different than what is our current speed so that would be like if you're traveling in a car down the freeway at say you know 55 miles per hour and then you speed up to 57 you now have a new velocity change in of two miles per hour so it's the step difference that you have so we could write the algorithm with velocity or a new velocity here uh, in my test I was using new velocity so I'm going to continue with that but what I want to do is I want to change and control which animation plays I'm going to start out with an if statement here and I'll say if player dot body dot new velocity x 
and it seems the numbers that worked well were somewhere between and you know, when it's greater than 0. Point, not O, oh, sorry. 0 0.9 then what we want to do is play one of our animations so what we're doing is we're not going to be playing the animations or specifying it here this is just we'll set our acceleration so we're decoupling or separating how we change our animations from how we're handling the keyboard input to change the acceleration of Player. So if we have a positive speed, that means we're or vector or velocity x, that means we're moving to the right. So I want this there. We'll comment that one out, paste it in. So that now gives us that. Else, if this dot player dot body dot new velocity x is less than negative 0 0.9. So we're handling those two edges of it. And this time we'll be playing left. Remember we which animation and that we want it to loop. Else. And our else would be this dot player dot anoms dot play turn. And notice here we're not specifying loop because this is where it's just facing forward. So let's comment these out of here. Comment that out up there. So we just have our keyboard to acceleration there. And now we're processing that velocity here which then allows us to handle the animations. So save, reload. So, well, looks like we got a little, uh, a little something, something off, not working quite right. So, it's kind of funny as I'm looking at going, what is wrong, new velocity x, it's not, New velocity x is new velocity dot x. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't get an error message. I guess though because I didn't get an error message because, well, that new velocity capital X not with the dot it would register as undefined, therefore it's false, therefore it's false. So then it would just play this because that's how the conditional works. So the conditional doesn't care that. That's bad code. It just said, nope, that's not true. So I don't care what it was. So now when we save this, let's see what we have going here. Click. And now we start running, slow down. And we stay facing the direction we're running until near the very end. And then we just have a little bit of slide. So I think that's definitely a big improvement to what we had going there. Now, what's kind of fun is you can really bump this acceleration number up so that the player accelerates very quickly or you can make it small so it takes a long time to get up to speed. Same thing with, uh, we have our velocity here uh, for jumping that sets it at negative 330. We could make that an acceleration option as well instead of making it a velocity because remember you push the button you immediately go so if you want to make it so it's like it ramps it up the longer you're holding it down you could go with acceleration what we do probably want to look at doing so that especially if the world grows which is what we'll be doing next is we may want to put in a maximum velocity because that maximum velocity is then going to create a better uh, experience because it's going to keep the player from getting too fast. So what we can do is say this dot player dot set max velocity and then we set what we want that velocity to be. So if we wanted to limit horizontal to 200 
and vertical to say 400, then we could do that. So what, even though our acceleration is high, with that impulse, that's really how quickly, but now you'll see the green bar that indicates our velocity vector. You can see how jumping it's bigger, but now we may want to adjust how much that jump is if we find that we're not quite able to reach. Okay, so it's pretty pretty close to what we have for these um, the distance on those platforms. All right, good. I got a gold star because I captured all the stars I needed to clear the level. So this is a good first start, is that we can add a little more of the physics here. We could roll our own physics and write the whole thing for acceleration, deceleration, etc. So we could build it in that way. Or we can play with what is built into the engine. And if we do that, as we add more and more objects into our game, if they're all working off the same physics engine, things do tend to play nicer with each other.